Thanks for joining me today. This is Jen with Gentastic Journey, and today we are going to create a beautiful card for my grandson. And this is a great idea when you need a small child's card or any child's card. So I'm going to take a five by seven card base, and I need some black cardstock and some scrap for some of these dies. So I pulled out some dies. I definitely want to die cut out his name, and I printed the number two because he's going to be two years old on a piece of printer paper and I just pulled one off of the internet and now I'm going to pull out the letters for his name and we're going to cut them out of this white cardstock and I use Nina white cardstock. All of the items I use I put in my description box below for you so you can go there if you look and see something that you might need for your stash of craft tools. So I am going to use my tri-blend markers and I'm going to just put some ink down here so that each of the letters has a little bit of shading and are kind of the rainbow colors because I'm going to be using some really cool stickers I got from the dollar store and we're going to put this together as a truck card but this is a great way to give some interest when you do die cuts. You can either put a little bit of ink down and blend some ink in different colors but I just decided to take out Spectrum Noir markers and get some ink down that way and I'm just pulling out some of the little dies here and there just to make sure I have enough ink down so there's not going to be any white spaces. My grandson loves trucks and I think at this age bright fun primary colors are perfect as well so this will be a great way to put his name with some great color. I also have a die that has a happy birthday in a circle that I thought might go well in that number two. So I'm going to put some of these rainbow type colors down so that that can be cut out in some rainbow colors as well. Definitely need a little bit more color there. And then I cut them out and I use press and seal to keep track of my dies, especially when they're small like this. You don't want to lose them. And I am notorious for losing things as I'm making cards. I'm constantly <laughs> pulling everything out and trying to find where I dropped that one little dot to the eye or whatever it is. So I'm going to put everything on my press and seal so I know where it is because I'm going to be putting the rest of this card together. So press and seal is my friend. You'll see me use it several times throughout this project and if you don't have some, go down to your kitchen <laughs> and grab it because it is a great tool in card crafting and other crafts as well. And I really thought this happy birthday in the circular shape came out really pretty with these different colors. I'm glad I used that because I think it's going to be really pretty. And then I'm just going to put this to the side and everything will be where I need it when I need it next. So what I decided to do with this is I'm going to make this look like a road and we're going to use some trucks to put on the road and it will be in the shape of the number two. So whatever the number is of the child that you're making a card for, you can print it off the internet or you can freehand it. I'm not that good at that. So I thought it would be a lot easier for me to just have it printed off the internet. Uh, there's a free version of Canva that you can pull numbers off of or different shapes off of. And so I would strongly suggest that if you can't find one just by Googling it. Now this is on printer paper, so it's a very thin paper. So we will need to make it a little bit thicker later on by adhering it to some additional cardstock. And then here are my dollar store stickers. And and I do have a video out of the dash I got from the dollar store. Don't ignore the dollar store if you have one in your area because they often have some really good craft items, stickers specifically. I think the Dollar Tree and dollar stores carry better stickers than even Hobby Lobby and Michaels do out by us in the United States. Here I'm just putting a little bit of tape runner on the back of the two because I'm going to adhere it to some cardstock. I decided to use some black cardstock just in case you see around it. It should all then look kind of nice and black all the way around. I'm going to use some foam tape and a trick with foam tape if you want to get it into a shape just take both sides off of the foam tape and then you can actually manipulate it pretty well. So you can turn it in a little bit of a circle there and here I'm turning it again and that's because I've got both sides of that sticky foam tape off. Now when I do the straight sections I won't take that second side off because I'm going to be cutting it so I only 
only do that when I have something where I'm going to have to maneuver it around a shape. And I'm just going to make sure where it's going to set because I want to put a nice background on this card base. So I've taken out some stencils and this is a little insert that's supposed to go into a tool but I just use it whenever I'm using ink because the ink doesn't stay on it and it protects my surface. I'm also putting a piece of copy paper printer paper inside of the card just so I don't inadvertently get some of the color from these stencils on the inside of my card. I learn all of these things by making mistakes myself so just feel like I have to share these with you. I am using some post it tape, removable tape, and I use this whenever I'm using my stencils. And I'm just going to be using some Distress Oxide ink and putting some ink down. I'll put all the colors in the description box below, but I'm using, going to use a couple of different greens. While the two is looks like a road, I just wanted to put some sort of background. It doesn't really make sense when you think about it because there's going to be grass at the bottom and I'm going to put some sky at the top. Then we've got like a road in the middle. So it doesn't really make logical sense, but he's a two-year-old number one <laughs> and I just wanted it to have some interests. This is what I came up with and you could do whatever you want. You could do some splatters on the back of this. You could blend some inks and not make this so difficult. Now I'm using some of my Stampin' Up! inks. This is pumpkin pie color and I'm just trying to give it a little bit of shading for the sun. We'll put some clouds on here as well and so far so good. I am usually, if you've seen in my other videos, when it comes to stencils I tend to make a mess. I'm always inadvertently getting color where I don't want it, but I think I'm going to do okay here today. I'm using another Distress Oxide. This is Speckled Egg. And it's just a nice light blue color. Perfect for a cloud. Just getting some ink on here. I'm not being real specific. I kind of want them to look a little blotchy because they're clouds. <laughs> And clouds can look blotchy, right? And again, you could do lots of different things here. You could use some patterned paper, even if you don't have stencils. You could freehand draw some clouds. Clouds are really easy to make your own stencils with as well. You can cut them out of acetate and make your own little stencil. Be creative. Don't feel like you need to have every item in your craft stash. Although I think that's half the fun is some of these items right and stencils are super inexpensive okay so I'm just using the remaining ink that was on this dauber and putting a few little trees in the background again just for the areas where that that black two is in case it's showing through I just wanted to have something in the background just to give it a little bit of interest since it's a big black two kind of in the middle I wanted there to be some more interest there I think that background looked relatively nice again doesn't make a lot of sense with the road but <laughs> We get to do whatever we want when we make our own cards. All right, so here comes my dollar store stickers, and they're nice and they're puffy. It's hard to see in the camera, but they're puffy. And so I think I'm going to put his name at the bottom of the card in the grass there. And then I've got this circular happy birthday, and as I look at it now, I'm like, hmm, where am I going to put this? And if you guys have watched my videos before, you know that if I get stuck, I will work on it for a few seconds and then I'll just ignore it. So that's what I'm doing here. I've decided to go on with the trucks. I'm using my Barely Art Precision craft glue because I don't trust the stickiness on these stickers. They're a dollar after all. So <laughs> we'll put some glue on there. It'll also give me an opportunity to move them around if I needed to. And so I'm going to pick a few of the trucks that I like, especially the ones with the big bright colors, and find a place to have them around this too. Now I come back to this because I think I have an epiphany <laughs> of some sort here. And so I'm like, well, what if I put half of it up there above the two and the other half somewhere else? And so I don't have it perfectly set yet in my mind, but I'm going to leave that like that and see what I think and continue on. I just wanted to make sure I didn't need to move one of the trucks in case I was going to put it on the two. And then I'm going to just look at some other trucks, but I don't want there to be too many because then you won't be able to tell that it's a road. So that one was just temporarily placed there and now I'll put some glue on it and adhere it down now that I've decided which trucks I'm going to use. I like that bold green truck. This one might be a little bit too big. I think it might cause a problem with my little birthday. I decide maybe not for that big red one. But we'll go with this yellow one that I really like as well and we'll kind of put it in the middle there so then you could still tell that it's a road, right? Because we need to know that the two is supposed to be a road. And then here I go. I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to mess around with this happy birthday thing anymore. I'm just going to put it down. That's the best way to do it sometimes because if you overthink it, 
then, you know, it just irritates you. And this is supposed to be enjoyable. Nobody needs to know that you didn't really know what you were going to do with that happy birthday, but you just wanted to have it somewhere on the card. And that's what makes it fun. You kind of have a couple of ideas in your mind of some some of the things that you might want to use from your stash, and then you just go with it. Now, I did have this down directly on the card base, but I'm going to actually cut that off. And I decided I'm going to eventually put that with a matting layer on it. And that's why I cut it off. And then I've decided to cut the Winston and the letters for Winston out several times on some white cardstock. And that's going to allow me to pop these letters up and give them a little bit more dimension versus trying to put a bunch of foam tape on the backs of all of them. I'd have to cut the foam tape pretty small in order to do that. These letters are pretty small. So I'm just going to glue all these white pieces together. So I've got two of each letter and then I've got the third one which is the colored layer. So we'll get that all adhered and I'm going to show you how I do the first one and then the rest of them all work the same. So I'm just going to put the W on top of the white W and I'll do that for all the rest of the letters and then we'll adhere the colored piece on top. And here you see me just put the colors on top. And I wasn't sure if I was going to use it as a shadow or if I was just going to use it for dimension. I didn't like it as a shadow with the white shadow because there's still some white showing through on that card. So I think I'm just going to keep them all just as the singular color on there, although the colors are all shaded. I'm lining up the letters so I can get an idea for where I want them to go. I would use like a straight edge or I have a T ruler if I wanted them to be super straight. I'm not looking for them to be super straight. This is a little kid's card, so I think they can be a little bit off and that will just look cute. And then I use my press and seal and I moved the letters just slightly when I pressed it on there. But again, I didn't want it to be super straight anyway. So I'm going to leave it where they were, put a little bit of my Barely Art glue on there. And then we just press it down and that makes it super easy. So again, press and seal is one of those things that once you get used to using it, you use it a lot in card crafting. And so I would strongly suggest you get some if you don't have it. It's just super easy, makes things a lot easier. And then I did didn't want to forget the little dot to my eye, although it's sticking to my finger. <laughs> and there we go. So I decided to put it on some bright blue paper. And then also I wanted a couple things just to take out some of that empty black space. So I have a little cone and I have a stop sign. So we'll get those glued on there. And I think that will look really good. And you'll still be able to tell it's a road. And then there's my card base. So it's a five by seven card base. And I'm going to put a couple of the trucks on the inside and then we'll stamp a sentiment as well. And then I decided to just cut this off with my scissors. I am not a big measurer, as you guys know, so I love to use my long bladed scissors if I can do it, and I could with this. Now it's slightly bigger than the five by seven card base. And what that means for me is that I'll probably be making my own envelope, which I make a lot of my own envelopes anyway, but I'll show you that at the end. I also have a whole video on how to do that as well. And then I think it's nice that it's kind of hanging over a little bit on this card. You can see it when you open it up, the blue. So I think that looks kind of cool. Normally I would cut that off, but I think it looks nice. So these are my stamps. And right now I keep them in these little plastic bins, but you'll see in a future video that I have reorganized my stamps because I kind of outgrew this process. And so this is my stamping platform. It's a Tim Holtz stamping platform and I like it quite well. I am using two stamps from different stamp sets. And sometimes what that means for us is that it's not going to stamp perfectly. So I'm using my Memento Black Ink and it's my favorite ink for doing sentiments. Now, as you see here, I'm going to push this down pretty hard and the bottom one is not going to stamp correctly. And that's because the top one is probably a little bit more raised than the other one. So I'm going to try it, give it a good try one more time. And then I realize that I need to take that other stamp off. So that's what you need to do is just get the stamp that works to stamp and then you can stamp the other one down. Now, I don't know if you just saw that, but I pushed that card and it caused a big boo-boo. So we can see here that I stamped that and it looks terrible. So I always keep my errors in my card tutorial because I think it's important for us to see that just because we make an error doesn't mean that the project is done. No need to get upset. I like looked at it for a second and was like, whoa, that's really unfortunate. And then on to how I'm going to fix it. I just stamped it on a scrap piece of paper and then I'm going to cut it out with a few of my dies. And that one was actually too big for it. So I'm going to cut a small one and then I'm going to use some of that blue cardstock. And this is a little bit too small for the sentiment, but it's just going to cut off just two little teeny and tiny pieces and I think that's going to be fine. I should have probably put it a little bit more centered in that white sheet of paper so that I didn't have this problem. And then I'm just going to die cut those two out and then one will be a matting layer and the other one will sit on top of it. I won't 
give it any dimension because it's on the inside of the card, but it will look just fine and nobody will know that I made that error unless they watch this video. And then I'm just pushing out the little teeny tiny things that are in <laughs> some of these dies. And then this gives me an opportunity to make some color on the birthday. Since it's a bubble kind of word, I decided to use some other of my markers. These are some metallic markers. And again, I will include those in the description box below. I got these on Amazon and they're quite nice. They're just a little shimmery and I like the way they look. And then this blue will be our matting layer. And again, I'm just gonna push out some more of those little, little dots and then we'll adhere it to the blue cardstock. Okay, and then we're going to put it on that error and nobody will ever know. Still trying to poke out those <laughs> little dots. But see, it looks cute and actually gives the inside of the card a lot more fun. So I've got this one piece that was cut out of the middle of that happy birthday thing and I decided I can't just let it go to waste. And it's one of those scraps that I don't know that I'd be able to use it somewhere else. And I apologize that my camera is having t trouble deciding whether or not it wants to focus on my hand or focus on what I'm working on. So it's a little out of focus, but I decided to use a permanent marker and I'm just gonna make a two that I hand drew on there and I want to put it somewhere on this card. I can't decide where I was going to put it on the inside, but I think it's going to be too much. So onto the envelope. And I, again, I do have an envelope tutorial and it will give you a lot more detail than I'm giving you here, but this is just going to be a glimpse. And because this is a five by seven card, you need a 10 by 10 sheet of paper. Because I do these so often, this is going to be very quick, but I basically fold it all together. I did get the center figured out and I didn't show that. And then I put the card in on the center. And then when I fold it all, I cut the little notches out. And then I do cut off that little triangle so that it just looks a little bit more finished. I'm using some tape runner and that is my envelope. So super easy. And then here's where that two comes in. I decided to kind of put it on there as like a little thing at the at, on the envelope. And then I added a sticker and there it is. I think Winston is going to love his little card. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you would, please give me a like if you enjoyed this and then also subscribe to my channel. I'm a small channel and I'd love to see you in our future videos. Thanks so much for joining me today.